see a little OP shorter, and they probably appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. You wait, Brother Craig. I know you've done services before at Zion. You're an expert at it. But when you get to be, you know, like on every Sunday, and your wife and your kids are going, mm, that was really good. You like that one? I look forward to that. The days you and I are working and praying together. Do things like we do here today to bring <laughs> love of Jesus Christ. Such a wonderful family. I thought if I let the service guys go first, I'd get past this. So I'll get this out of my system. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, you are our Savior, our comfort, our strength in all things, at all times, in all places. You once said to your disciples, and you say it to us, My peace I leave with you, and my peace I give to you. I don't give as the world gives, only as I can give. So don't let your hearts be troubled, don't be discouraged, and don't be dismayed. We are gathered here today struggling with the unexpected loss of Tommy Sanders. Papa, someone very near and dear to us. But thank God we do so with our faith in you. We do so needing and claiming this peace and comfort that only you give to us. And so we pray that you comfort this family with the sure hope and comfort that you are risen from the dead with the sure hope and comfort of life eternal with the sure hope and comfort that Papa, though gone from us, only in body is now in heaven with you. With the sure and hope and comfort that one day we'll see him again. And the glorious life that never ends, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so I texted Craig earlier today and I said, uh, so I got about 35, 40 minutes. Is that going to be too long for y'all? He said, no, that'll, that'll probably work. So about 10 after, we'll start now. You can start your watches. You have permission because you're so close to Ellen and me. You can do like Ellen does. Every once in a while, I'll see her in the back room. But it's God's word. God's Word brings comfort. So I'm going to take three Bible passages today, and I'm going to tie them together with our faith in Jesus. God is our Heavenly Father, and Tommy's faith in your faith in Jesus Christ. Isaiah 43. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you and he who formed you, fear not. I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Vicki, thank you for the honor to do this for you and your family. Faithful and loving wife. You and Tommy shared more than 50 years together. Your love, your admiration, your devotion to each other. Taking care of each other and raising such a beautiful family. That's going to be evident as I now name them. Craig and Kathy and Scott and Marley. Dearly loved sons and daughters-in-law. And as I name Nicole and Amy and Matthew and Kelsey and Ethan and Logan, Riley and Kate, beautiful grandchildren. Little Stella, one very special great-granddaughter, I guess uh, she's not here today, but she's special. And beloved sister Jane. I called you by name here today, because according to this Isaiah passage, that's what your Lord is doing. He calls you by your name, and when you heard your names mentioned, because of your faith, you were assured of a couple of things. You have your spe this special relationship with our Heavenly Father. You are God's family. You are God's children. You are His redeemed and forgiven people. Therefore, that means you are His comforted people. He's named each one of you, and he loves 
the names he's given you, and he loves calling you by your names. When you heard your names mentioned, you were assured of one thing. God's got this. He's our God. He's in control of our lives. He's in control of all things, so late Monday evening, a week ago, he called Tom by his name. Because Tommy's name was written in the book of life. And Tommy's next home, his next room was going to be heaven. Now, if Papa could call each one of you by name now, he'd assure each one of us that everything's okay. I don't know, maybe Papa would call you by some of the nicknames he's given to you. This loving man, this wonderful husband, father, grandfather, great-grandfather, brother, uncle, brother in Christ Jesus. He just seemed to have a way of calling to people and giving them nicknames or maybe shortened versions of your names for his family. He loved doing that, didn't he, Miss Vicky? Or Poo, Poovo, and Yardley, Tuta Baker and Rat Jack. That's just to name a few of you. I know there's more. No matter how Papa called you, by your full given name or a nickname that he'd chosen, he had signified a special relationship that he had with each one of you. He was telling you, my love for you is never in doubt. Never. And he loved you all the same. So, since he gave y'all a bunch of nicknames, y'all decided to give him one. What a name of endearment. Papa. <laughs> you attach that to him. You know, your name or your nickname or a shortened version of your name indicates a belong a special place in the family. A sign of intimacy, trust, and friendship. It's a unique quality. That name describes in the relationship. It was so evident in this family and with Papa. Each one of you has a special place in God's family. He calls you by a couple of names here today. Your given name, but he also calls you because he's renamed each one of you in your baptism. And when you came to faith in Jesus Christ, I don't know that Jesus has got a nickname for each one of you. But he calls us by a name that has his own name right at the beginning of it. Christian. We gather as Christians here today. It means we are Christ's people. It means we are Christians who believe in the life, death, resurrection of Jesus Christ. And because we are Christian and God's specially named people, we are assured that one day we'll all be together as family again in heaven. Because we are Christians, we call on God's name. His name is fully trustworthy. His name is more powerful than anything we'll ever face. His name is forever loving. His presence is His reputation in His name is He'll always do what's best for us, so that is what we believe. Monday a week ago, it was best. Papa, you know it sounds much like a nickname that Jesus gave to his heavenly father. Well, it really wasn't a nickname, but it was really a term of endearment. So tell me the name Jesus gave his father, and the way he related to him doesn't sound a lot like Papa. It was Abba. Abba Papa. Abba meant to Jesus and his relationship with, with his father would your Papa did with you folks. It's a character of a loving daddy and a granddad. A dear special name to one who can fully be trusted. One can, one whom we can always lean on, always count on. Papa, Papa. They both signify a godly father's presence in our daily lives. Constant care. Always providing. Above all, it signifies an unconditional love. Here, let me share that. From an email that I got a couple of days ago from Scott. He was dedicated to his family. He dropped everything if only asked. No complaints. 
No irritation in his voice, just unconditional love. He was always happy around his family and his mom and mom. Didn't matter what or where or what we were doing. He loved his wife, his sons, his grandchildren, and his great grandchildren. This was seen in little things that were done, cooking special breakfast for the kids, a pancake in a funny shape, or a first initial of their name. He was quick to see humor and connected items together that someone might not readily do. Craig, you kind of mentioned that too with his nicknames. They just kind of connected in some quirky kind of way that they connected. He, associate, he associated as I do now, and it's funny to think about a song or a music, or music that was heard as something funny or meaningful. This little thing as it sounds now that I am a father is much large is a much larger larger act of love in my mind. And that in every moment, memory and action he was indicating his love to me and those around him. He was always quick to make uh, he was always quick to make someone or seek to make others smile. He was laughing and never really thought of the persons in front of him. He was always fair, honest. And I was still learning from him. An example of this was when in the hospital, we weren't allowed to go up there. He called me and he spoke to me briefly. We were disconnected. He called my mom, laboring, breathing. He said, Vicki, I love you. I love you. His last words to Grounds. His last words to each one of you. Abba, Father, I love you. It's the relationship Jesus had with God, the relationship you have with God, your Abba and your Papa. First and last words to every one of you. I love you. From Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 4, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, and God has made everything beautiful in its time. For he has set eternity into the hearts of men. So I know there is better, nothing better than to be happy and to do good while we live, that everyone may eat and drink and find satisfaction in his work. This is a gift from God. Now these are sobering words from Solomon. For Papa and for all of us, there is a time. There is a time to die. You know, it wasn't always that way. In the beginning, God created all things, and there was only a time to be born and a time not to die. A time to laugh and never to cry, a time to dance and never to mourn. The world knew nothing of weeping and mourning and death. Solomon says, then those are the many, many seasons we go through. Death is one of those seasons. We're experiencing that here today. That's because in Romans 5, Paul writes, Then sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin. And so death spread to all men, because all have sinned. But then Paul reminds us, but though the wages of sin is death, the free gift of God is eternal life and faith in Christ Jesus. So what Solomon wants us to understand here today that unfortunately the, this, what we're going through, is one of the many events and seasons we'll experience in life. Now, not all of them are good, and what Solomon is not saying is that every event in our life is predetermined, appointed, or willed by God. He doesn't do that. He doesn't predetermine and appoint the bad things to happen. He appointed Jesus Christ. He set Jesus in our heart so that God works out all things for God's children. God knows the time and place of each one of us, as He did with Papa. And we'll go to heaven. What we do know and experience is all these activities and all these seasons, all these events that happen in our in our lives. Well, there's kind of two sides to it. They include laughter and joy, dancing, but they also, on the other hand, 
include disappointments and challenges, sorrows. It seems to me like what Solomon is saying, we can experience the good things that God gives us in life, but things kind of balance out because we live in a sinful world and some bad things can happen as well. And what Solomon is doing, you see, he's just explaining the realness of life. He's very practical and honest about life. All the good and the bad. It averages out, it balances out. So here's what reminds me of this passage about Tommy Sanders. He was able to take the good times, make them the best for his family. And when the bad times hit, and the times that weren't so good, well, there was his faith and your faith to balance things out, faith in Jesus and the promises of God. And we know that God always works things out for the best. One thing I'll always remember about everything was always in perspective. Enjoying the gift of laughter, smiles, joyful hearts. Always putting everything aside to love and care for his family. As a matter of fact, Craig, you mentioned Papa took such care of Vicky and his family that he almost did it to a fault. I wish I had that fault. What a good fault to have. That's what Solomon meant when he said, there's nothing better for men to be happy and do good while they live. That everyone would eat and drink and find satisfaction in what he does. He took care of his family to a fault. Well, this was some fun stuff, the way I figure it. Enjoying a papa breakfast, grandkids. How'd he make his toast? In the oven. He didn't use a toaster. He put butter on the bread and he put it in the oven. Because that goes better with grits and bacon and gravy. Papa's favorite. Or maybe it was team tuna bacon. Now, Grams and Papa, taking care of your grandchildren. I don't know, Nicole, was it that first day at school that you cried because you were really scared and it was going to be a tough day because it was your, your first day, but you knew Papa was going to come pick you up after school, What you didn't know was he going to wave and holler at you and just embarrass you all over the place. We'd all probably cherish another ride in that old pickup truck. Scott? He wanted to learn how to hunt. Papa didn't hunt. <laughs> but he's a good papa. So he he chose what turned out to be one of the coldest, dreariest, rainiest, wettest days of the year. Go hunt. And in that, he thought he's got how to vision a deer. And then later, Scott will always remember falling asleep in the back of the car, Papa holding him in his arms. Good times. Or maybe it was Kathy threatening to pluck Papa's eyebrows out with <laughs> tweets. I just happen to know so much about you because we are very close to y'all and y'all are here. Papa loved his family. Papa was always there for us. He had a way of balancing life through the ups and downs in all the seasons. That's a great quality. Because Papa knew that God said eternity in our hearts. You know, Craig and Scott, you remember this. When we drove up the Hamill family Monday a week ago to start putting things together, and I expressed my condolences to you again and hugged you, and, and the first words out of Scott's mouth were, if I can only be half the man my dad was. Craig, you totally agreed with Scott. It's a nice illustration. See, God said eternity in our hearts for one reason. He's going to send us Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was born not as a half man or a half God. He was truly fully man and fully God. And fully he became one of us and he took the full load. Not half the load, the full load of our sins. He suffered God's complete wrath in our place so that one day we might be forgiven and 
become fully like him and that's how Tommy is right now because you see here we are as God's people the process has started in us faith in Jesus it's the beginning of what we're going to be like when we get to heaven we're not complete yet we're in a process we're still sinners we're perfect in God's eyes but we're only halfway there we're only halfway complete only half the person God has designed us to be Tommy is full and complete. So Scott and Craig, half the man, is just perfect. From John 14, 1 to 4. Let not your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. And so I go to prepare a place for you, and I'm going to come back. And when I do, I'm going to take you to be with me, that you may be where I am. Because you know the way to place where I am going. Okay, Jesus says it. He says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Tommy Sanders had a good heart when it came to his family and just people in general. I don't know of a man who had a bigger heart. Do you? And Tommy really didn't have heart problems. Well, sure, he was a cardiac patient to some degree. He was a recipient of a heart bypass surgery. No triple, quadruple, double bypass sometimes. So. It was a follow up then with some stents. But he never really had a heart attack, and he was a cardiac patient that really took good care of himself. Back on November 9, when he was experiencing some pain in his chest, and he asked Craig to take him to the ER, the usual procedures happened. There was blood drawn, there was an EKG, more blood, and tests. But the to doctor looked at Tommy and said, Tommy, there's a lot of things that can cause chest pain, but today it's not your heart. It's not your heart troubling you. Now here today we might be dealing with troubled hearts, and Jesus says, don't let your hearts be troubled. So he's talking about a different kind of heart trouble. He's not saying that your heart shouldn't be troubled at the death of Papa. Of course our hearts are troubled. It's all happened unexpectedly. Tommy's heart was in good shape. He was in good shape at the age of 78. We expected him to live a lot longer. But when Jesus says, and we say, do not let your hearts be troubled, what he means, what we mean to say is death is not nearly the end. Death is but a door we walk through to get to a more glorious life. And that's what Jesus means. It's that Ecclesiastes 3 thing. God has made everything beautiful in its time. In Christ Jesus, God has turned death into a beautiful thing. The entrance to life eternal. Children of God never die. They just pass through the door of death to live forever. That's what happened to Papa Monday. He went from a hospital room to a room in his father's house because that's where God wanted Papa. No chest pains anymore, no problems, no troubles. Nothing can trouble his heart. You know, that's beautiful imagery. Matthew, one of your favorite places, I understand, especially on Saturday, was to go to Papa and Graham's house. Is that correct? Yeah. But... Yep. That's where you want it to be. That's where one could find Papa and Graham's. Like I said, you could enjoy a Papa breakfast, celebrate birthdays and holidays, and when you did, everybody was wondering where that LED clock and whose package that would show up <laughs> as a gag, right? <laughs> Memories, love, joy, and laughter. I figure you folks thought that was the perfect place this side of heaven. Now you take all that and you expand it into something perfect and that's the Father's house. And Papa is waiting for you. All of you. To gather again once at what is now his house. So he's got this old lid from an old dingo box, shoe box or boot box, and on that lid he put Team Puvo and Team Yardley and he stuck that thing right out in the front yard. So that when you get there, you'll know you're at the right place. I know Christmas.
Christmas is just a little over two weeks away. It's going to be a tough and different Christmas this year without Papa. I know you've thought about that, but I also know that you've heard Craig's words. So remember, Dad's going to spend Christmas in heaven this year. And we're okay with that. Because one day we will too. Until then, each day God calls you by name. He's placed eternity in our hearts. His house is Papa's house. It's our house. We'll all be hopeful. I'm going to read the obituary. We just kind of do that. Just to gather one last time our thoughts. Is that okay? Thomas, Vaughn, I'm glad y'all got that all cleared up. <laughs> Sandra, 78, of Ab Abilene, passed away on November 30th, 2020 in Abilene, Texas. He was born in Cameron, Texas. You know, that's not taught far from Giddings, Texas, and every once in a while we talk about what happens in Cameron and Giddings, and usually we just decided what happened there should stay there. <laughs> but it was kind of the life I was used to growing up with. To Mary and Pat Sanders on August 5, 1942. He graduated from CHO High School in Cameron. He attended the University of Texas, earning a Bachelor of Business Administration degree. I don't know how many when Ellen and I would go to Fredericksburg and we'd bring back these things that we put in the youth uh, auction. I don't know how many times you requested something about the Texas Longhorn so you could give it to Papa for his birthday or for Christmas. You got any of that around still? A lot. A lot. He married the love of his life, Vicki, on December 29 in Temple, Texas. They were married over 50 years. Tom worked for the State of Texas Department of Health and Human Services for 40 years until retiring in 20, two, uh, two, 20, 2000. <laughs> I want to say 2020. Sorry about that. Man, that guy loved Texas. He loved Chile. He loved everything about Texas. He also served in the Air Force National Guard and received numerous awards. Tom was preceded in death by parents Mary and Pat. He is survived by his wife, Vicki of Abilene, Texas, son, Craig, and his wife, Kathy, second son, Scott, and his wife, Marley, and sister, Jane Kerr, grandchildren, Nicole, Amy, Matthew, Kelsey, Ethan, Logan, Riley, and Caitlin, and great-granddaughter, Stella, numerous nieces and nephews, a private family graveside service to be held at Elmwood Memorial Park Cemetery, with Pastor Kay, Pastor of Zion Lutheran Church, officiating. Honorary Paul Bears are Scott Sanders, Craig Sanders, Joe Power, Scott Bates. Tom's family wishes to extend our sincere thanks to Dr. Samantha Gooden for many years of excellent care, as well as the medical care staff at Henry's Hospital. Scott. Craig, I found a poem, I tweaked it a little bit, I shortened it a lot, half the man my father was. I wish I could be half the man my father was to me, opening the eyes of my child beyond the vision he can see. I wish I had the willpower to sacrifice like my father, and take time to do all the things he did with my mother. I wish I had his courage to face the obstacles that life will throw, to live with faith in God and with immeasurable persistence show. I pray I can raise my family with such love as my parents did for me, making them compassionate, kind of men and women to be. I wish I could have all the wisdom that you can teach and share, so I can be a good father and raise my children and grandchildren with lots of love and care. I wish I could be like my parents, 
and hopefully raise another meal. I may not do a flawless job, but I will try to be the best father I can. Thank God for Jesus Christ. So, Miss Vicki, we have this little tradition going at Zion Lutheran of Bob Colquist, Sandy Colquist, years ago, 12, 13, 14 years ago now, diagnosed with breast cancer, was told he had six months to live, to live nine and a half years after that. It wasn't easy, but she decided she should do something to give thanks to God and glory to Jesus Christ. So he started an angel, she started the angel ministry in Zion. And uh, since I am so honored here today to be the pastor who cares for Christ's family, I thought it'd be nice if we carried that tradition. And at times and places such as these, we give you a peace angel from Zion Lutheran. Okay. And in the back it has the Bible passage that I were, uh, read from John 16 as I started the service. And so, the angel of peace, we want you to have this. We want this to always remind you of God's peace and comfort in Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay. guys didn't think I'd wade through that bunch of papers with the wind out here, did you? I'm getting pretty good at it. Right of internment. I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end he will stand upon the earth. And after his skin has been destroyed, after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. That's the theology of the resurrection from the Old Testament. Jesus just comes right out and says that I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Let us pray. Merciful Father and Lord of life, with whom live those who have departed in the faith, we thank you for the blessings of body and soul that you granted our departed brother, Tommy Sanders, whose earthly remains we now lay to your rest and care. Above all, we rejoice at your glorious promise to all of us, living and departed, that we will rise again at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, because he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to do Psalm 23, part of the interment. I'll do the old King James. If you know it and you would like to say it with me, please do. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We now commit the body of Tommy Sanders to God's resting place. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, when we do so in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life of our Lord. Because one day he will come again, and he will change our lowly bodies to be like his glorious body. Because he has that power to enable him to bring all things to himself. 
May God the Father who created this body, may God the Son who has redeemed this body with his holy precious blood, may God the Holy Spirit who lives, who lived inside Tommy because he was the temple of the Holy Spirit, keep this body until the day of the resurrection. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, by the death of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have destroyed death. By his rest in the tomb, you sanctified the graves of your saints. By his glorious resurrection, you bring life and immortality to all of us, so that all who die in faith abide in peace. Receive our thanks for the victory over death and the grave that Jesus has given to us. Keep us all faithful as you kept Tommy faithful. Because we wait for Jesus to come again. So that all in heaven and all in earth who believe in him will be united in the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. In Jesus' name. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, fellowship of be with you this day. Bring you comfort as only God can do. Take you this day forward. For man is talking about love and family. Share that. 